We mentioned last week that uh, some of this would become very bizarre when you're talking about spiritualism, so here it goes. Very famous people were taken up by spiritualism, which could include attendance at seances. Such people as Cornelius Vanderbilt and Abraham Lincoln were devoted attendees at seances. It was through his interest in spiritualism that Vanderbilt met and got involved with the communist leaders, Tennessee Claflin and Victoria Woodhull. They were supposedly spiritualist mediums and magnetic healers. Tennessee Claflin became his mistress, and Vanderbilt helped finance some of their activities. The sisters ran Section 12 of the Communist First International in New York and published the first exclusive newspaper devoted to Wall Street. During an interview for a newspaper, Vanderbilt was asked how he made millions on the stock market. His reply, do as I do, consult the spirits. Then he added that his stock was bound to go up. Mrs. Woodhall said so in a trance. Intellectual and political leaders such as Cullen, William Cullen Bryant and the communist Wendell Phillips, leader of the American Anti-Slavery Society, were spiritualists. U.S. Senator and Governor of Wisconsin Nathaniel P. Talmadge was a spiritualist and petitioned Congress to look into spiritualism. Many claimed to speak to the dead, and out of this movement, the, CFO, the Theosophical Society was formed. Madame Bavlansky, co-founder of the Society, claimed she relied heavily on the works of Rosicrucian and Asian Brotherhood leader Pascal Beverly Randolph, close friend of Lincoln, among others. Spiritualists had an influence on the theories of Charles Darwin, particularly Dr. Alfred Russell Wallace, who worked with Darwin and was also involved in socialist theory as well. Spiritualism has been the fundamental mystery of most secret societies and drug traffic was its chief commercial secret for many years as part of the whole genre of seeking a higher state of mind through the use of drugs. Spiritualism was also an element of the drug scene in the heyday of the hippie movement in the 1960s. One could not tell where one began and the other ended, they were so interwoven. Spiritualism has remained a part of American society and influence that is more subtle and hidden from public view today as spiritualism than in the, and then, than in the 1800s. However, anyone desiring to do so can find them. We do not recommend it, however. It's a dangerous uh, research. Many of the spiritualist leaders are also leaders of the socialist movement. The minister and spiritualist Adam Bilal was a leader in the New England Anti-Slavery Society. He authored Practical Christian Socialism. Another example was Elihu Barrett, Barrett, editor of The Christian Citizen, who then edited Citizen of the World. The man who ran the Wisconsin Commune, so instrumental in the founding of the Republican Party, was Warren Chase, who not only was a socialist, he was an advocate of spiritualism. Now, Abraham Lincoln attended seances in New York before he was elected. Most historians who admit Lincoln held seances in the White House leave out this fact and blame such activity on his wife, but she was not with him in the New York trips. The medium, J.B. Conklin, who conducted the White House seances, stayed overnight there on such occasions. Upon Lincoln's election, Conklin recognized Lincoln as a frequent guest at seances in New York prior to his election. Conklin stated in the Cleveland Plain View that Lincoln was a spiritualist. Lincoln was shown the article, and instead of contradicting it, he said, The only falsehood in the statement is that the half of it has not been told. This article does not begin the wonderful things to tell the wonderful things I have witnessed. After the war, the spiritualist leaders formed the American Association of Spiritualists in 1868. By 1871, they elected communist leader Victoria Woodhull as its president. While membership numbers are not known, it is estimated that they had a first-level influence on at least 600,000 people through their meetings and nearly 30 periodicals. They also engaged in education by starting a large number of children's progressive lyceums or speakers organizations. 
They engage in a large number of the initiatives of the socialist agenda. The American Association of Spiritualists is an example of the scrubbing from history of the communist organizations and their involvement in front groups. Few writers ever mention the organization, only listing the National Association of Spiritualists formed later in the 1890s when the communist leadership was less noticeable. As the spiritualist movement flourished, it morphed into several subcultures, including Satanism, the uh, Theosophical Movement, and what would be called today the New Age Movement. These movements were more widespread than the average American realizes today, and he sees their symbols and logos in public, often without realizing what they are or their significance. The Free Religious Association was established in Boston in 1867 by various communists, atheists, and Unitarian ministers. They rejected Christ completely, and of course, Emerson was one of their leaders. Out of this group was formed the Radical Club, intended to influence the arts and letters, publishing, and so forth. Emerson withdrew from the club once it began to be discussed publicly, since his involvement being widely known could have destroyed his career. We will close this discussion by mentioning a few other organizations. However, a great deal more information on spiritualism is contained in my book. The Theosophical Society was formed in New York in 1875. The famous Anti Besant became a leader in this group. She became increasingly radical in her socialism as she grew older. Part of their aims was a universal brotherhood or new world order. It was founded by Helen Blavatsky, the Satanist, and very interestingly, it was the guiding force of what became the Indian National Congress that has ruled India off and on for decades. In 1876, both the American Secular Union and the Free Thought Federation were formed. The latter's, latter purpose was to eliminate Christianity from the United States, Bible reading in the schools, abolishment of judicial oaths, just about anything you can imagine by eliminating Christianity from public life and view. 1876 was a busy year with the formation of the Society of Ethical Culture and the National Liberal League as well, organizations which were allied with the spiritualists. Spiritualist publications were started at the time that still exists today. The spiritualist, spiritualist movement was overt and it was huge, but you would never know it by reading so-called history. We have a great deal on this movement in our book. Today, it exists behind the scenes with a larger following than you can imagine. Next week, public education after the war. <laughs>